Right now in the Hyundai Texans radio studio, it's head coach Lovey Smith. Coach, great to see you. I know that it's not going as well as you wanted to in the fourth quarter, but you're right there at the end of these games. What's it going to take to get over the hump? I know it's a little bit different every game, but can you put your finger on it? No. Well, some of the things that are kind of obvious is that we're, we're close, and and that's what you want to be first. I mean, it's a lot of foot. There's a lot of football left to go in the season, and each week we're learning something, but and seem like we're getting closer and closer. You know, an overtime game. Uh, and then seem like one possession right at the end. And but I the focus first has to be on doing more before we get to the end of the game. Mm. And that's what we're seeing yesterday, you know, just playing the run better earlier. Uh, I talked about the third and one situations. So it's really that and I just know that the guys at the end, it's not like we're exhausted or something like that. The guys are playing hard. We just got to play a little bit better ball at the end. Coach, when we were in OTAs, it was near the end of OTAs, and I remember Mark and I kind of just started chatting with you a little bit, and we mentioned Jalen Petrie, and your eyes kind of lit up. Like, you kind of you withheld it a little bit. We're, we're still trying to understand your mannerisms, but I could see <laughs> there was something in your eyes like, I like this Petrie character. What have you seen from him that – what did you see from him back then that you're seeing now and maybe even more so three games into his rookie campaign? Well, first thing we saw was a talented player that's a football junkie, extremely smart, uh, just dedicated to become the best version of himself he can possibly be. That's what we've seen daily. He had missed a rep. Uh, I've just seen him grow and grow so much. Now, once you get to a position where you kind of know what's expected of you each play, now you can let those natural talents come out, and that's what we're seeing from him. Uh, he's an excellent uh, zone defender. He can play the ball well whenever. Both of those interceptions were yep. great breaks in zone coverage. He can play man. Uh, the position will blitz. So it's a, the safety position in our defense is a position that, as a defensive player, you should want because you're going to get a chance to show all of your skills. Coach, the guy playing next to Petrie, Jonathan Owens, and not always right next to him, but he's second in the league in tackles. And uh, we have him on the Texans player show on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. There's the promo. But what about his story, Coach, as a player who is on a practice squad on and off and, and hangs in there and eventually makes that initial 53 and contributes to you on the defensive side? Well, I think it's good to have success stories like that. You know, guys come into the league in a lot of different positions, a lot of different places. I mean, some get drafted high, you know, like a uh, uh, Derek Stingley or, or Jalen Petrie. But some have to follow different paths, and both can end up in the same spot. And that's the case, as you mentioned, with Jonathan First off, he's a talented guy, too. Can run, jump, smart, football junkie. Literally, every day the building has been open, he's been in it since I've been here. So he really loves the game. And then it was just a matter of waiting your opportunity. First, excelling on special teams and then getting your opportunity uh, to play in the secondary. So we like what he's doing for us and love that safety tandem that's going to grow together. Coach, I know there was a lot made of – the Bears' rushing performance, but I got to thinking about it after the game, and I did a little math. You gave up 141 yards on the ground on just four runs, but on the 36 other runs, you gave 140. So less than four yards per carry, you're giving up on 36 runs, but it was those four big plays. I know there's some good and some bad in that. Did you see some good in the run defense that you like, and what part of the run defense do you want to see improve? Well... John, that's exactly how we've looked at it. And first, take those four out. No, we can't take those four out. We had major things that happened on them. And that's what your rushing toll can really look bad if you don't take care of business on a few plays, in that this case, those four. But those others, guys were playing hard, you know, doing in the spots that we want them to be in. So I don't think that it's a major issue. But uh, yesterday that really showed up. But you can't have those things. We pride ourselves on running to the football. If one guy misses a tackle, we, you have teammates there, and we didn't get that done on those plays. Well, Coach, uh, as tough as it was when you look at that yardage number, at the end of the day, you're right there with a chance to win the game. And I know you ran it better than you have, 
So every week the running game for the Texans gets a little bit better. What's going into that? I know Pierce is doing well for you. You're getting better blocking up front. How do you see it as you continue to improve in the ground attack? Well, I think uh, it first is a commitment to uh, what we believe we should do. And it's supposed to get better each week. I mean, we're going into week, you know, the fourth game of the season. And, um, you know, a lot of us are new coming here. I don't want to use that as an excuse, but uh, we're going to stay the course of what we believe. And uh, the players are going to get better each week. We're going to do a better job of putting, as coaches, putting them in better situations. And uh, we're going to eventually see the results. I look at the NFL, too. I mean, we like to think that, you know, every there's 32 different places, right? And they all think that we're a whole lot better than everybody else. But there's parity in this league. You just look at how the NFL is being played out right now. We're right there in the mix, in the midst of uh, uh, the others, mm -hmm. as I see it. But we got to get it done. We got to get on a streak. First way to get, you know, part of that streak, right, is to get one. That's what we got to do. Coach, I want to ask you about special teams. But first, I want to ask you the fake punt. And I, I don't want to give anything away, but just the thought process of deciding at that particular point, because we were talking about it during during the break. We were all shocked. And yeah. that obviously is the best kind of fake punt is the fact that they don't know it's coming, yet they were in punt safe. And you still ran it for a couple of yards on them. What kind of went into that decision to fake it at that particular point? I think going in, John, to every game you have to have fakes yeah. up. I mean, have a fake in every form of the kicking game that you can. And that's a part of our basic game plan each week. When we call them, I mean, you have to get to, you know, the situation kind of dictates it a little bit. We were close, you know, and we thought it, without going into everything that we go through, we thought it was a favorable position that we would be in. And uh, that week before, and luckily it played out that way. And and as I said, you know, in the press conferences, the special teams were on. They played, you know, of course, the best ball of the year that we played. And um, so when you have momentum like that, you try some other things. Coach, how do you and your staff look at the way the turnovers went yesterday? Because both interceptions were off deflections and – just as easily could have been, well, they could have dropped to the ground or whatever the case may be. And then you have Pierce with a couple of fumbles, but he gets them back. So do you give all of those the same kind of mark? Like this is a would-be potential turnover, but good thing we got it back? Or how do you gauge that? Good question. Uh, the fumbles first. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. So Damon has got to protect the ball. It's about ball security. Um, defenses. That's If you look at a lot of defenses now when they come to the ball, carry it. They're trying to punch the ball out. Running backs, you know that. Damon knows that. So that part of it is bad. If you look at tip balls, quarterback releases the ball. Can't do an awful lot. Maybe if you look, well, you shouldn't have thrown it there. But some of those yesterday, that was – so you can't totally blame the quarterback for tip balls is what I'm getting to. I mean, we got to look at, you know, uh, if we should – have them maybe throwing the ball in certain situations in, in some uh, you know places like close down in the red zone, some small windows in there, balls get tipped. Some things happen. We don't want it to happen. So I'm not going to completely blame the quarterback for that. Coach, you played and coached a lot of games in that stadium. How difficult is it to actually be effective consistently throwing the ball in that stadium, especially with the wind? Because there were times yesterday that wind kicked up and I was like, whoa, you could see those spirals were kind of – turn a little bit sideways. How tough is it to actually throw in that stadium? Well, it's tough, but history kind of tells you that a little bit. It was changing throughout. It has to be constant communication throughout. Passing the ball, yes, with the quarterbacks, kickers, yeah. uh, punters. I mean, all you, know, you just have to know, again, constant communication and uh, look at the flags and then hope uh, it doesn't change within a few seconds when we actually get in that position. What about special teams as a whole, Coach? Because it was a really banner day in that department for the Texans as you look at good returns and the kicking game and downing punts deep. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, it's just that. I mean, we need that third phase, <clears throat> the special teams, to perform well. And they did. They gave us a chance, you know, as was mentioned, backing up, uh, you know, Chicago's offense, making them go the long distance. But we have excellent players. We put a lot into it. Frank and Sean do a great job with our special teams. And uh, we're going to win games this year based on what we do on the special team. If you're a special teams coach, are you required to have that big personality and just get really fired up? Because Frank is like that. And a lot of the good ones have that kind of personal uh, dimension to themselves. Yeah, I, I think that's good if you have that. But uh, I want that guy that knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. You know, and – 
and teaching the guys. And yeah. it's one thing about Frank being, you know, yeah, he has that demeanor too, but he's detail and they're, uh, you know, they're ready to go. We feel like they were prepared. It's more of that as much as anything because there's a lot of things that can go on, of course, uh, with the special teams. Uh, they don't get a chance to meet our practice as much as, you know, you do offensively and defensively. Coach, a guy that has not been here long but has been here longer than a lot of others is Jordan Aikens. And you've seen this a lot in the NFL. Guy goes down, you got to have next guy go up, it's next man up sort of league. Jordan hasn't been here long. He scores a touchdown yesterday, has the big catch on the sideline. What do you think of the way that Jordan played and what he's brought to you? you it right is good when you have history with, some, with someone, and sometimes you know you have to go your separate ways for whatever reason. But since Jordan has gotten back, um, he has excellent speed. He's a, he's a you know, great athlete. Um, liked everything he's answered the question he's done since he's uh, gotten here. And um, when I say excellent speed, he's a tough matchup for a linebacker or safety because he's got size, too, with it. And uh, he proved that yesterday. We joke about this a little bit. Jordan Aikens played baseball. How important is it for guys when you're studying whether you want to bring them here or they're you know in college and they're coming to the NFL, how important is it that they have played multiple sports? I, very important. And I say this, you know, nowadays is in this specialized society at a young age, the worst thing that can happen to an athlete, you want him to be involved in as many sports as possible. Soccer, baseball, hand-eye coordination, uh, basketball, just all of the sports you want our young people. They'll eventually sell into their rifle sport. But every sport seems like teaches you another, you know, some type of technique some, uh, that will help you with your ultimate sport. Do you think parents, this is not the Amogee Bank question just yet, <laughs> but do you think it's good to push your kid in a sport, not too hard, but say, hey, you'd be really good at this, at least try it, versus pushing too hard? How do you gauge all that as a parent slash teacher, coach? I, I think as a parent, there's a lot of tough decisions that you, you need to make that we have to make raising up our kids, grandkids, and all that, and we want what's best for them. So there's something that we see. Our experience tells us uh, that, you know, I've seen guys that kind of look like this that have gone on to do that. I think you should let them know that. But I don't think you should – when you push, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, expose them to as many things as possible, yes. And a lot of times what I've seen from my kids, grandkids, and all – we expose them, and, and they like it. I mean, there's, no, there's something great about sports. There's so much you learn from, from being in sports, and uh, from what I've seen, it's, it's all good. Back to the business of the league and the Texans, and you were asking your press conference about dressing guys on game day and everything like that, and we've talked a little bit about this, but being able to dress 48, being able to have these practice squad elevations like Jordan Aikens, that's got to really be a help as a coach. I mean, it, I know it helps everybody, but it gives you some flexibility. It, it does. It makes our game better, too. You know, uh, and every team kind of kind has gone through some uh, – you go through injuries, different things, where you need some guys. And, uh, you know, early on we talked about a 69, 70-person roster. And, and I said, guys, before this is over, everybody's going to get – we're going to need everyone to contribute. Mm. And, and that's the case. And um, – you know, normally about a quarter into the season, some of the injuries, you know, a lot of guys don't play in the preseason. A lot of injuries come. This is kind of a period of time when you need them. And then you need to see guys that, uh, on, that have been on the practice squad that get a chance to be elevated and play well like Jordan did, of course. Coach, there are a lot of veterans on your team, a lot of young guys on your team, but mainly the veterans. When you are in a spot where you are now, where you've been close, but you haven't gotten over the top to get that, what do you expect from the veterans as responsible leaders of the team? What do you expect from them to kind of get over the hump and kind of show the young guys, this is how we do it, this is how we go get this win? Well, I think first the message comes from the coaches. I mean, when, all right, a lot of times people, all right, you, you lose a game, all right, we got to change everything up. Well, there was no belief in what you were doing in the first place. You, mm. When you hear people say stay the course, it's early. Yeah. And then you analyze what really happened. We talk about how close we are. You clean those things up is what you do. And you go back to the prior. You can do something about it. So our guys are going to come in. We're going to evaluate. They've already evaluated the video on their own. Tomorrow we will work, watch it with them. Then it's on to the Chargers. And eventually you keep pounding that rock. It cracks.
It's kind of simple as that, and that's what we're going to do. When you have a team like the Chargers, they have a bunch of injuries, and I know everybody does, but how does that affect preparation, Coach, when you have a player who's iffy to play or not? Like Roquan Smith last week was iffy yeah. whether he would play or not. How does that affect the way you prepare? you got to get ready for them, but their replacement might have a different skill set, for instance. Yeah, it may, but I think, first off, there's a, a special player, you know, you, you prepare for him a little bit differently, but you prepare for the position as much as anything. Right. You know, they're going to have a quarterback. They're going to have a wide receiver. They're going to have a left tackle there. So you that it's more that than an individual person, and you prepare for what that team likes to do. They're not going to change some team offensively. You know, you're not going to be a passing team and all of a sudden become a running team. All right. So the, on what you're going to do, uh, you practice that as much as you know, just having a game plan for an individual. Coach, having played them last year, late December, yes, can you take much out of having played them? I mean, I'm sure you've watched the, the three games or will watch those three games as you get ready for them and game plan, et cetera. But can you take anything out of that win from last year and seeing them on tape from last year? Yes, and as far as the preparation that goes into getting ready for an opponent, yes, we watch, we'll watch, we watch you know, preseason. Sure. Some, they didn't play an awful lot, but the, reg, the three regular season games, yes, we'll watch it. But we absolutely can get an awful lot. And um, same, it's the same offensive staff, our same defensive staff. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, on the other side of the ball, offensively, it's, you know, it's going to be different for them and for our offense a little bit. But, yes, there's an awful lot. We've already watched that game from last year. They're same thing, same quarterback. Scheme's not going to change an awful lot. Yeah, and he played with the rib issue, whatever that is, what was reported. But, Coach, along the lines of injuries in general, when you have a player who's a little banged up and they want to play, but the athletic trainers might say, eh, how do you decide all those things? Is it a collective thing? Ultimately, you have to trust your medical people, but what if the player really wants to go? How do you work all that out? Well, I think it's pretty simple. There's a difference between pain and injury. If, yeah, if a player mm -hmm. has pain, and yeah, we want him to keep going. But if a player has an injury and our medical staff has says he has an injury, he won't play that. He won't practice that day. And if he has an injury where he's not available for the game, he won't he won't play the game. It's kind of as simple as that. Uh, and we as coaches don't cross over to that to the medical part of it. All right, we let the experts tell us yes or no. Coach, you never and I knew you would, you would never make going to Chicago about you or reunion or anything, but after spending a number of years on that sideline, is it a little odd to be on the other sideline? How was that yesterday, kind of being on the other sideline, wearing different colors than you were used to? Well, I mean, it's, it's odd. I mean, it's different. There's a lot of people, you know, um, when I was there, there was a lot of people that I talked to before the game, saying, sure. like, all of them are still there, you yeah. know, and you, you kind of spoke to them then. But eventually, that, that really does leave you. You know, when you're coming into the stadium, you reminisce a little bit then. But once, you know, ball is teed up yep. and it's kicked off uh, you just go get into football well being in the AFC of the nine road games and eight home games in the regular season so after back to back on the road how good is it going to be to be back at NRG Stadium pink ribbon day fans behind you that whole thing oh we're excited about it there's nothing there's no there's no place like home it really mm -hmm. isn't and especially you know playing in Houston we have you know great outstanding fans that are really they know they're educated, no football, really into their team. And right now they know that we need a little bit. You know, maybe that little bit is just getting back at home and playing in front of our home fans. I know we're excited about it. All right, Coach, the Amogee Bank Ask Coach question of the week. Now, a uh, listener was watching the uh, Dolphins play against the Bills yesterday in South Florida, a lot of heat and humidity, that kind of thing. We have the closed roof here, but uh, they wanted to know, Worse humidity, Houston, or worse weather conditions as far as the heat and humidity combined, Houston or Tampa Bay? They're pretty similar, I would say. Um, I'm here at Houston now, right? Oh, yeah. Houston, oh, Houston for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it was humid when we were in Tampa. And I'm sure, you know, Miami is a little bit further south, even more so, closer to the water. Um, they're both, you know, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, San Diego is listening, uh, definitely Houston. They better be ready. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, not San Diego, right? Yeah, the L.A. Chargers. Well, look, we make That's that mistake we all the time. That's we get fined if we say San Diego. Yeah. You're okay, Coach. Yeah, yeah. we have fun. But you're still practicing early in the morning, right? You still like doing that? Are yeah. you going to change that as you go on through the season and it gets cooler? No, because that, it made sense then. But then you get in a routine, and our yeah. players like it. There's nothing like the first thing we do to start our day is, is football. Yeah. So uh, it shouldn't change. It, it's easier out there now because it's not as hot, but – uh, that's not a factor. And we had that routine down uh, now, so we'll, we'll stay the course. Why is routine so important to a football player, to coaching staff, and the whole organization? I just think routine is important in everything, that, in anything that you do to just know it instead of, all right, what am I going to do here? When you get into a routine, and, and especially athletes, you know, I, some have superstitions, you say. I mm-hmm. say routine of just knowing you know, how that day is going to play out. That's always been beneficial to me, whether it really helps or not. It's kind of what you believe, and uh, I definitely believe it, and most guys I've been around believe it too. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck this week. Anytime at all.